Yashar, Jasher 15. And in that year, there was a heavy famine throughout the land of Canaan. And the inhabitants of the land could not remain on account of the famine, for it was very grievous. And Avram and all belonging to him rose and went down to Mitzrayim on account of the famine. And when they were at the brook Mitzrayim, they remained there some time to rest from the fatigue of the road. And Avram and Sarai were walking at the border of the brook Mitzrayim. And Avram beheld his woman, Sarai, that she was very beautiful. And Avram said to his woman, Sarai, Since Elohim has created you with such a beautiful countenance, I am afraid of the Mitzrim, lest they should slay me and take you away. For the fear of Elohim is not in these places. Surely then, you shall do this. Say you are my sister to all that may ask you, in order that it may be well with me, and that we may live and not be put to death. And Avram commanded the same to all those that came with him to Mitzrayim, on account of the famine, also his nephew Lot he commanded, saying, If the Mitzrim ask you concerning Sarai, say she is the sister of Avram. And yet, with all these orders, Avram did not put confidence in them, but he took Sarai and placed her in a chest and concealed it amongst their vessels. For Avram was greatly concerned about Sarai on account of the wickedness of the Mitzrim. And Avram and all belonging to him rose up from the brook Mitzrayim and came to Mitzrayim. And they had scarcely entered the gates of the city when the guards stood up to them, saying, Give tithe to the king from what you have, and then you may come into the town. And Avram and those that were with him did so. And Avram, with the people that were with him, came to Mitzrayim, and when they came, they brought the chest in which Sarai was concealed, and the Mitzrayim saw the chest. And the king's servants approached Avram, saying, What have you here in this chest which we have not seen? Now open you the chest and give tithe to the king of all that it contains. And Avram said, This chest I will not open, but all you demand upon it I will give. And Pharaoh's officers answered Avram, saying, It is a chest of precious stones. Give us the tenth thereof. And Avram said, all that you desire I will give, but you must not open the chest. And the king's officers pressed Avram, and they reached the chest and opened it with force. And they saw, and behold, a beautiful woman was in the chest. And when the officers of the king 
beheld said I. They were struck with admiration at her beauty. And all the princes and servants of Pharaoh assembled to see said I. For she was very beautiful. And the king's officers ran and told Pharaoh all that they had seen. And they praised said I to the king. And Pharaoh ordered her to be brought, and the woman came before the king. And Pharaoh beheld, said I, and she pleased him exceedingly, and he was struck with her beauty. And the king rejoiced greatly on her account, and made presents to those who brought him the tidings concerning her. And the woman was then brought to Pharaoh's house, and Avram grieved on account of his woman, and he prayed to Yahuwah to deliver her from the hands of Pharaoh. And Sarai also prayed at that time and said, O Yahuwah Elohim, you did tell me, my lord Avram, to go from his land and from his father's house to the land of Canaan. And you did promise to do well with him, if he would perform your commands. Now, behold, we have done that which you did command us. And we left our land and our families. And we went to a strange land and to a people whom we have not known before. And we came to this land to avoid the famine. And this evil accident has befallen me. Now, therefore, O Yahuwah Elohim, deliver us and save us from the hand of this oppressor and do well with me for the sake of your mercy. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Yahuwah sent an angel to deliver Sarai from the power of Pharaoh. And the king came and sat before Sarai. And behold, an angel of Yahuwah was standing over them. And he appeared to Sarai and said to her, Do not fear, for Yahuwah has heard your prayer. And the king approached Sarai and said to her, What is that man to you who brought you hither? And she said, He is my brother. And the king said, It is incumbent upon us to make him great, to elevate him, and to do unto him all the good which you shall command us. And at that time the king sent to Avram, silver and gold and precious stones in abundance, together with cattle, men servants, and maid servants. And the king ordered Avram to be brought, and he sat in the court of the king's house. And the king greatly exalted Avram on that night. And the king approached to speak to Sarai, and he reached out his hand to touch her, when the angel smote him heavily, and he was terrified, and he refrained from reaching to her. And when the king came near to Sarai, the angel smote him to the ground, and acted thus to him the whole night, and the king was terrified. And the angel on that night smote heavily all the servants of the king and his whole household on account of Sarai. And there was a great lamentation that night amongst the people of Pharaoh's house. And Pharaoh, seeing the evil that befell him, said, Surely on account of this woman has this thing happened to me, and he removed himself at some distance from her, and spoke pleasing words to her. And the king said to Sarai, 
Tell me, I pray you, concerning the man with whom you came here. And said, I said, This man is my man. And I said to you that he was my brother, for I was afraid, lest you should put him to death through wickedness. And the king kept away from Sedai, and the plagues of the angel of Yahuwah ceased from him and his household. And Pharaoh knew that he was smitten on account of Sedai, and the king was greatly astonished at this. And in the morning the king called for Avram and said to him, What is this you have done to me? Why did you say she is my sister, owing to which I took her unto me to be my woman? And this heavy plague has therefore come upon me and my household. Now therefore, here is your woman. Take her and go from our land, lest we all die on her account. And Pharaoh took more cattle, men servants and maid servants, and silver and gold, to give to Avram. And he returned unto him, said I, his woman. And the king took a maiden whom he begat by his concubines, and he gave her to said I for a handmaid. And the king said to his daughter, It is better for you, my daughter, to be a handmaid in this man's house than to be mistress in my house, after we have beheld the evil that befell us on account of this woman. And Avram arose, and he and all belonging to him went away from Mitzrayim, and Pharaoh ordered some of his men to accompany him, and all that went with him. And Avram returned to the land of Canaan, to the place where he had made the altar, where he at first had pitched his tent. And Lot, the son of Haran, Avram's brother, had a heavy stock of cattle, flocks, and herds and tents. For Yahuwah was bountiful to them on account of Avram. And when Avram was dwelling in the land, the herdsmen of Lot quarreled with the herdsmen of Avram, for their property was too great for them to remain together in the land. And the land could not bear them, on account of their cattle. And when Avram's herdsmen went to feed their flock, they would not go into the fields of the people of the land, but the cattle of Lot's herdsmen did otherwise, for they were suffered to feed in the fields of the people of the land. And the people of the land saw this occurrence daily, and they came to Avram and quarreled with him, on account of Lot's herdsmen. And Avram said to Lot, What is this you are doing to me, to make me despicable to the inhabitants of the land, that you order your herdsmen to feed your cattle in the fields of other people? Do you not know that I am a stranger in this land amongst the children of Canaan, and why will you do this unto me? And Avram quarreled daily with Lot on account of this. But Lot would not listen to Avram, and he continued to do the same. And the inhabitants of the land came and told Avram. And Avram said unto Lot, How long will you be to me for a stumbling block with the inhabitants of the land? Now I beseech you, Let there be no more quarreling between us, for we are kinsmen. But I pray you, separate from me. Go and choose a place where you may dwell with your cattle and all belonging to you. But keep yourself at a distance from me, you and your household. And be not afraid in going from me, 
For if anyone do an injury to you, let me know, and I will avenge your cause from him. Only remove from me. And when Avram had spoken all these words to Lot, then Lot arose and lifted up his eyes toward the plain of the Yardan. And he saw that the whole of this place was well watered and good for man as well as affording pasture for the cattle. And Lot went from Avram to that place, and he there pitched his tent, and he dwelt in Saddam, and they were separated from each other. And Avram dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Shevran, and he pitched his tent there. And Avram remained in that place many years.